Shit. Hello and welcome to the Carbitrage Podcast, episode 266. I am Eric Berger, joined as always by my co-host Ryan Sinanski. Hello. Hey, I'm in my happy zone. I'm gonna you got your hammy ham sandwich. That is the voice of a Nolan, a wild a Nolan, Nolan. A wild Nolan with a ham. With a Whoa. hams in a wine glass. Yeah, it's how you're supposed to drink it. Hello. Jana, hello. I got Capri Sun. I had I a lot of those the last hours. I think I'm going to drink a hams out of a wine glass tonight. I intend on having another hams It looks today. proper. We have I really spooky red crystal glasses. Yeah, so my hams oh, will look like red wine. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> I'll look even more classy. I regret buying red wine glasses. <laughs> glasses, but they look great. The basic bougies. <laughs> what you should really do to be tongue-in-cheek is put white wine in the red wine glasses. Ooh, yeah, I do that usually because I like white more than red, so... I ordered, after we ran the airplane out of Champagne the first time, uh, <laughs> which we did twice, uh, the guy behind me ordered, not a mimosa, but a white wine and orange juice, because that was the next closest yeah. thing. <laughs> oh, no. And I ordered just the plain red wine and then a full-strength mimosa. <laughs> they gave me a glass of white wine just straight up. I'm like, airplane white wine isn't great. No, no it's not. I would rather have a cheap red than a cheap white. <clears throat> yes. but mm. Well, that's the thing is I know my... My hams of white wine. Yeah. Like, I know my, my yeah. cheap, if readily you know available, what you're buying. Mm-hmm. good white. I, I know what I get. Yeah. So, no, I mean, if you're I, wondering, it's a, it's a Morgan un oak Chardonnay. A Morgan, you say? Yes. And it's good. Yes. Okay. Built right. from wood, mainly. <laughs> ironically, that is, the, that is the third <laughs> tangent yes. of where Morgan was going. I, ironically, ironically, oh, ironically it is, yes, it is a different Morgan. This one's good. Also, their oak will it, Chardonnay. Will it float? <laughs> Their oak yeah. chardonnay is good too, <laughs> which is Are you the about same the as it's that's buoyancy the wo- of a that's witch. The wo- that's the wood bodied one. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going to work in a duck to this? Yeah, that's know, what right? I want to know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, before we dig too much into things, I want to briefly touch on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash carbitrage. On this super custom handcrafted webpage, you will find three open-ended levels of support starting at just a buck a month, mainly used for hosting costs, but it buys us a beer. If you want to, please feel free. If not, we'll keep right on making the show, patreon.com forward slash carbitrage. All right, what are you drinking? Oh, you already covered that. Hams. I'm I'm happy. I got hams. Uh, I'm the only person who hasn't covered it. I'm drinking uh, Ryan's least favorite beer, which is the last can and finally, thank God, of that is Budweiser. much worse in every way than hams. I it was is. actually, I was just telling Nolan, I'm like, yeah, no, this, I'm like, is that better than a Budweiser? And On the said, record, yes. Yes, it Missouri's is. great. Budweiser's the best. Uh, Off the record, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's... Missouri is not great, and Budweiser is not this, this is better Stop. than a Budweiser. Facebook feed. Oh, no. But the thing is, this is also like half the price of a Budweiser. And it's definitely better. No gut rot either with yeah, hams. Yeah, this is great. Like, yeah, no, you can drink this all day and be fine. Yeah. Same thing with a Coors Banquet. They're very level pegging for me, but that's way cheaper. That's true. Yeah, this is much cheaper. I mean, Colorado Kool-Aid is great. I love that. But this is cheaper. So Yes. Yeah, I'm not, I buy them both. Yeah, they're both the fine. Yeah, they're both Speaking fine. Speaking of road sodies, let's get to the cars. All right, yes. all right, all right, all right, all right. So, the Party Phantom over. that I haven't fixed yes. yet because it doesn't fit in my garage and it's not nice enough out most of the time in the fall. <laughs> Constantly, I'm like, <clears throat> there's a small car? <laughs> it doesn't uh, fit. <laughs> Anyway, the whole time one of these is lightly broken, you're like, wow, even if you're looking at the fuel bill, you're like, this car would be the perfect candidate for electrification Mm -hmm. because silence and weight doesn't matter at all. Yeah, no. And those are kind of the things with EVs. Yeah. Luckily, Rolls Royce finally doing it. You revealed it. You revealed it. The Rolls Royce Spectre. So this is basically a Phantom Coupe. You know what? With with electrification. And I think that's a perfect fit. You know how Mazda was like, Toying around with doing a rotary hybrid. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, a, and a diesel rotary for a while. This would be oh. a perfect yeah. candidate for a rotary hybrid. Because hmm. that rotary engine's not doing any actual powering. All it is is just being a range it's a extender. It's just a generator. And yeah. rotaries are super smooth. And, and very they take small. no space. So you could put a rotary like generator into a Rolls Royce, take up absolutely no space, Let me have stop like a five-gallon fuel cell... And you'll be doing just that. Fine. would have been smart in the i3 Rex as well, but you know what they did? Oh. No, they put in a motorcycle engine. Exactly. And this oh. is owned by, uh, oh, sorry, who's Rolls Royce currently owned by? Oh, the no. Germans. Yeah, BMW. Okay, yeah, so anyway, this won't That's be That's going to be bad. <clears throat> they're not going to do a Rex. <laughs> but the hopefully. Germans invented the rotary. Because they're going to put a four cylinder N20 in there or something, and it's just going like, to you know, sludge up, and the chains are going to shatter. Germany has this habit of making all this technology. And then that technology breaks. 
especially the AG. And then Japan mm, takes the going. same technology and goes, you know, if we change this, it'll just work. Because, like, I've just been thinking about this for like, the last, like, hundred years I've been doing that. Because they based their, like, entire military off of German military. Oh? Yep. And they kicked Russia's ass in the Sino-Japanese <laughs> War. Uh, and then they had to get nuked to end World War II. Um, so <laughs> that was for the previous thing. Whereas <laughs> Germany didn't need any of that. Because Germany, all we had to do is we just had to wait for a tiger to break down in the middle of nowhere. And then they had to send their old VAG tech, like, all the way out to the tiger. Oh, yep. And then they're like, I'm sorry, I don't, I can't fix your CIS. And then they killed that one tech. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, then, then it was broken forever. Yep. But, like, no, actually, like, that was, like, a big thing. It was, like, their shit would just break. He's got his vacuum and tube scan tool. It. Yeah, like, they couldn't fix, like, they couldn't fix their vehicles <laughs> Nine, it's in the road. It's OBD2. I've got the wrong heads. <laughs> would you say that's kind of like Russia now? Yeah, no, it's just like Russia now, like where their shit would just break at the end of the war. The dude like, needs a triple they just square. Couldn't like, yeah, where it's just like they couldn't just like fix it. America, where we're like, the love it. like we just had like, we we just had like That's flatheads. We, we had giant flatheads in our tanks, and they yep. worked fine. Yep. And were they particularly inspired? No, no, but, but they worked fine. Mm-hmm. It's a dodge. <laughs> like, oh no, my timing chain broke. Oh, the engine's screwed. No, no, somebody shot the timing chain, but all the valves don't contact anything it's not interference so it's not a problem <laughs> this will be back up there in about a new five chain hours. There. yeah 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 whereas <laughs> like it, like a tiger it's like oh no the timing chain broke i guess we're just screwed because the factory had to re has to repair it and it got blown up last week <laughs> i guess we're fucked now like do you have a service manual i do not this is no longer do you have a tank. special tool 58b because you need it to set the timer. Yeah, this Disclaimer, isn't a, this, carbitrage is not a Nazi sympathizer. No, this, yeah, well, I know. I'm talking shit about him the whole time. Like, this is no longer a tank. Trust this me, is Nolan. now just a our small castle. Our audience is very well yeah. aware of our stance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> so, we are perfectly be, fine with alienating people. It would <laughs> so, be kind oh, of weird if relief. <laughs> you weren't against anti-Semites. Yeah, I mean, I'm, oh, this very, is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> very Jewish. Your nose be. is scraping me from here. I get it. <laughs> but, like, yeah, no, j- Germany's never been able to do anything very well. Even like today, like mm-hmm. they're trying to send stuff to Ukraine. All their shit's broken because it's all German. <laughs> like it's just German shit. I'm sure always, you don't want to look at my wagon. <laughs> it's always a problem, and it's always been a problem. And it's just like it doesn't need to be perfectly engineered. It has to be good enough. There's more than one reason why Ryan doesn't like German engineering. Oh, I just hate it so much. But yeah, I'm. I've noticed that um, vehicles. Of that were made in certain countries have very similar engineering to how, how their cultures are. Mm. So, like Italy, mm. you know how Italy's Let's like. Let's go for it. You know it's how, exciting. Yeah, exactly. Do you know how Italy's tanks fared in World War II? I would say not well, Bob. For one hundred. And do you know how many they made? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Eric is killing a wasp. All yeah, right. he killed a wasp with his Ferrari. Um, no suspense was made. The wasp actually died. In World War II, Italy made almost no tanks because oh, they were God, hand making everything. Yeah. There's another one? Oh, no. right there. Oh, hey, oh, bud. It's a bee. Oh, it's a bee. It's a bee. Um, don't run um, that's it's not. I killed the paper bee? wasp. That's... I don't think that's a bee. That's a bee. That's a honey bee. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. There's no detached deviated thorax or whatever. Yeah, it's oh. a deviated thorax that you gotta worry about. Um, but anyway. Um, just blow and he'll go away. That's where the yeah, asshole lives. Care, but... Yeah, that yeah, guy's he's, fine. He's, just, he's a friend. He's just looking to pollinate your ass. Yes, in World War II. Buy me dinner. Italy's, uh, Italy's tanks Most expensive thing on the were menu. all handmade, and they, everything was riveted together. Because definitely couldn't really fight the war until it came That's on cam, but definitely. man, was it great for that 200 RPM. <laughs> yeah. Why do your tanks rev to 18,000 RPM? It sounds nice. <laughs> you should uh, Google World War II Italian tank hat. Because their tanks were also very small. They were about the size of a Fiat. They were actually made by Fiat's. Or by Fiat's, by Fiat's. Circling back to the Rolls Royce briefly, something <laughs> yes. I'd like to point out. This is the perfect EV for the historical that, That's literally how big Italian tanks were in World oh. War II. Tankette. Yeah, they're called Tankettes. Oh. This was made by Fiat, if you don't believe. <laughs> it's clearly a Fiat. Anyway. <laughs> it has armor, so it's not the Abarth version. I get it. I see. It. Not the performance. The performante. <laughs> Oh, no, it has armor, just not on the back. Super Leggera. Just, took- <laughs> no, that, 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 is, that, that is a performance. They, 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 just light they removed the back. They removed the back That's where armor the engine faster. for the cooling, yeah, yeah, exactly. fat, everything. It's like, it's like the Fiat where they open, they yep, open the engine bay. Right, yeah, that's right. exactly. Yeah, no, no, no. So the Spectre. Yes. yes. 
Tell us about this. Which is Let's, not a Bond movie in this no, context. No, no. Um, they had a quote on the press. I, I read this midweek because I was like, ah, EVs. I hate EVs. They're ruining my manual transmission loss. But they're, but but they're not. But this car was not a manual transmission car. Great. Make it an EV. Didn't care. It's supposed to be quiet, EV. But the story of... His story. Ah. The his story. The story I'm telling. Man, you Rochester story. folks are weird. Nah, it's tell, tell us about the history. The, the founder, yeah, tell us about the history. Back in the early 1900s, was like, I can't wait for EV. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's basically saw it, so they don't have to pivot. They don't have to re-explain. They do have a big grill. They have to explain that might be the only. That's like their biggest styling element that right. they've maintained for eternity. So. Correct. And it's so, a very small grill. Yeah, I mean that could be where I would call it we in, put the rotary. In attic. God damn. Exactly. That's it needs a little cooling. You just put it in. I wonder what this button does on the mixer. <laughs> oh no, that was Nolan's microphone. Anyway, moving no, on. No, but that, it was just it, it was nice that we don't have to make a reason why they're an EV you company. Have They've been an EV. They've wanted to be. Yeah. There. Well, this it was is... the culmination of their ethos, which is quiet, extreme performance. Yeah, and I think that a lot of Luxury. people. I'm yeah. not sure if you've ever heard my like my whole spiel about the EV revolution being the gas revolution against steam cars. Mm, it's very, very similar to how people were about steam cars, where a lot of people were like steam enthusiasts because it's just like all of the torque in the world. Right. You, yeah, but if it overheats, it kills you. <laughs> and if you run out of coal or whatever, then you're like turbo fucked. Like, yeah, like it's not something that's simple to use. Whereas the like EV, like, people are like, yeah, but like, you have the EV infrastructure. Like, yeah, there's a downside. There's also a downside to gas engines. Like, how long do you have to right. wait for your car to warm up in the morning? Yeah. You don't have to do that with an EV. It's Correct. Heat. Like, it's... You have to wait for the actual air inside your cabin to heat up. Right. Not for your heater to heat up before the air in the cabin. And hopefully the gear oil in your gear case is nice and lubricious. Lubricious? Mm. Lubra like a... It's lube. Lubricating. Yes, but because anyway, that would be the only real speaking thing. Speaking of EVs, yes. I want to talk yes. about a different okay. one, actually. Cool. Yep. Okay. Let's do it. I want to talk about the Rivian R1T. Okay. <gasps> oh. You know how they have their, like, all speaking the displays? Speaking of Japan and the Nazis, built in an old Mitsubishi plant. That's true. Go ahead. Um, you know the uh, displays that they have in, like, all of them? Yes. They run off of Unreal Engine. Oh. In the Rivian. Really? It's like... It, yes. Is it instead of like in lieu of an operating system, where it like runs on top of a Linux system? Like right? it, it's the op, the whole OS is built off of Unreal. That's kind of cool. Whoa. Yeah. So this means two things. One, it can run Doom, and I guess by extension, it can run Stray. But I'm into it. Yes, I thought you'd enjoy Good it running Unreal Engine well, running Doom. Or Stray. I just feel offended, but okay. Or Stray, even better. Okay. Yes. <laughs> or there's a dedicated meow button. Yes. And you have buttons on your steering wheel, so you could totally just like play Stray on your Rivian. Theoretically. Hmm. Also, I guess I'm going to have to develop Ultima Online for it. Please do. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what's better than my Carmageddon game inside an actual vehicle? Play it while you're parked <laughs> in safety, yes. attached to a CCS. <laughs> That's how you do it. When you're, tr when you're fast charging, you, do, yeah, you can use the Does steering it wheel. That'd be great. Show the little truck in the menus and stuff, like when the doors open, I assume, yeah. like most modern all, cars. Yeah, all that was done in Unreal Engine. So if you have a white one, is it white? If you yeah. have a blue one, is it blue? Yep. Oh, thank God. It's really cool. Like a actually, multi kill, <laughs> mega kill. I'm I'm just curious. My next question, like after I learned that, is I wonder if they programmed it in C plus plus or if they programmed it in blueprints. Mm. Like I really want to know which one they use because they have, they have a visual. So like Unreal Engine's like super easy to get into. I've actually been working in it like a oh. lot in my spare time, like making okay. my own games. And um, they have this really cool. Volkswagen um, mechanic simulator. Oh yeah. <laughs> no! They have, they have this. You can't beat it's it. It's all blood. <laughs> it's not a winnable game. They have they have this uh, they have this really cool programming language called blueprints, where you don't have to actually like learn the different codes, oh. where you just connect dots. Nice. That's ah, a visual. It's a visual programming ID. language. It's very cool. I love it a lot. But you can also just like instead of doing blueprints, you oh, can they just call do it conversational. C++. Yeah. Think, and so, right. yeah, something like that. It's mm. conversational language, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Because yeah. we have a CNC mill that has that, and it's like, why aren't they all like this? <laughs> it's so easy. Do the thing that you I'm like, should be doing. You know, then, like, I'm drawing the part in the thing with, like, buttons. Yeah, like, seriously. Dragging my fingers. It's so like, easy. The thing, it's it does so what you, your wow. brain... And, like, so I, I understand, good. like, the limits of blueprints because, like, it can't do everything. And, like, when you have, like, giant games, you can run into some problems. Like, Stray was written with blueprint. 
and that was a really? great game. Yeah. It's a wow. fantastic game. And it w- runs perfectly, right? Is that that yeah, cat I game? Yeah, that's a cat game. It's written entirely in Blueprint. Is that that cat game? But um, You, you invite yourself in here on the about. podcast, and but, you don't know what Stray is. <laughs> I was trying to give free mechanic advice. But... <laughs> This isn't car talk. We're not clicking clap the Tappert brothers. But yeah, so um, it sounds describe like the rally. sound to me. Yeah, <laughs> make the I've, sound. I've seen this many times. You're gonna want to listen. But yeah, so is it more of a, a noise or is it more of a, a, a kachunka kachunka? Oh, yeah, so, my last wife made so, that sound. So uh, like blueprints, like you run into like some issues, but like you can also like go through the code when you're done writing all of it, yeah. and then like. If you really want, you can basically just get something like edits it in C plus plus and just looks at like what like what you, what inefficiencies you can remove from it. Like so, oh, you can nice. actually go from blueprints. So they'll give everything you the that's actual code, yeah. and then you yeah, can so play and exactly. get the last mile. Exactly. Nice. So like it actually like you uh, yeah you can make an entire game in it, and then if you really wanted to, you go back and edit and all C plus plus five frames per second. We should look at the code. I've had pretty big... ah. There's the frame rate limiter it put in. <laughs> Delete. But yeah, so I'm. Now I kind of want to start seeing. You want to be R1 a T's developer on cheap. the latest game console, the Rivian R1T? Kind of. Like I kind of want to. I can't wait for like ten years until they're cheap, and I really know what the hell I'm doing with Unreal Engine, so I can just like go make a game for a Rivian. Like that sounds I mean, great. All the horizontal uh, landscape Model S screens. I mean, those are running on basically the Steam Steam Deck hardware. Yeah. Oh, oh, the RDNA too. Like I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ryzen CPU. That's Radeon that's GPU. That's really funny. Yeah. And, like. Oh, Makes man. sense. Pretty cheap power. Uh, well, <laughs> what I love about well, this on it. is I know how <laughs> Unreal Engine works, and literally programming inputs is the easiest thing okay. hmm. in the world. You just go to project settings. Your project is your truck. Yeah. And then you click on where it says settings. You just scroll down to inputs, and you have all of your different inputs. And then all of those inputs make events, and all those events do the thing. So, like, if you're like volume down button, that's your input. You can just be so like, you could add volume down controls button. in. Yeah. Like you can oh, like yeah. That'd be amazing. Can you add a traction control defeat button? Yes. Good. That's literally like part of it. Like, that's actually very interesting to me, because like I wonder how deep the Unreal Engine programming goes. Like, is it all the way through like the controller of like the engine, or the motor? Oh, I would like, imagine I wonder, not. Yeah, but, but that's I don't the know. thing. But what can, at what point does the Unreal Engine control stop? I don't, yeah. I want to, that's what I'm wondering. Because at the know. very end, I, at, at the very least, I could program a video game for this truck. All right. But I'm also wondering. I'm like, I wonder if I can if I can program this truck to, you know, do your. I would imagine all the operation things. Some this low sounds enough like a level. Defcon. Yeah, it does though. Beg the question: uh, Is it separate from the low level? The car has to run. It doesn't reboot on the highway stuff. Yeah. Or can you get to that part of the car? That's what I'm wondering. Like, Does that actually point... beg the question? The conclusion's not the premise. Oh, did oh I say God. stuff Anyway, wrong? so... Shit. Tell movie. me how it goes, Mr. Bedantic. I'll let Scott do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God there's a burger for everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it does not beg the question. R1T has suddenly got very interesting to me. I couldn't <laughs> They got <laughs> very interesting to me when I found this out. Couldn't care less. I knew. Also, <laughs> You're welcome these are skateboards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's uh, why the R1S is a yeah. thing. So, Not the like, if screen. this, depending on how far back this Unreal Engine thing goes, this could make a nice coach, wagon body, a coach building, mm-hmm. go very easily. Because that you just, skateboard would look great under the body of a BQ. Uh, BQ. I don't know about Buick, but BQ. 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 Maybe a Roadmaster. There you go, B body. Yeah, B body. Yeah, Roadmaster, okay. Yeah. That'd yeah. be real hot with a B body. Right. Mm. Yeah. A B body does two nine and just sleeps everybody in the dust. <laughs> and it looks like an overlander in the process. <laughs> <laughs> and inside, it's just some guy playing like Counter Strike. <laughs> Ultima <laughs> Online. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, Ultima Online. I have this game that I've been developing like so in the background hot. called it's Ultima so Online. Did you ever play Vi- uh, Vigilante Eight? I have played briefly a little. Okay, Vigilante that or like uh, Twisted Metal. Right. Yeah. It's Twisted Metal, but with just Nissan Ultimas. Oh no! That's what's called Ultima Online. Yep. Oh, and it's just people fi- uh, vying for you took uh, it to the subprime loans, yeah, sub-pri- body damage, yeah. poor repairs. <laughs> then you can level up to a Maxima everywhere. or a, a um, what's the CUV called again? Oh, I can't remember. Rogue, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, Marano. or the Murano. That's yeah, the one I was thinking yeah, of. Yeah, Murano. Oh. The Halo car is actually a cross cab with a broken top. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
<laughs> yes. gonna, Nissan is going to send me a cease and desist. Yes, they will, but it's going to be worth it. <laughs> then we can call it a peace on Chaltima challenge or something. Or it's to be I'm just going to release it for free and make no money off of it, and then it's no longer a problem. There you go. <laughs> like it's, no, it's just you got to do what Tire Rack did in the '90s, where they like very poorly doctored yes. up E46s with like a round grill. I'm like, no, it's not an E46. <laughs> this is totally not an E46. No. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. Next all right, topic. let's move this on. This is just generic car. So, going back to currently on sale manual transmissions that aren't being stolen away from Nolan by Rolls Royce. <gasps> this is as weak a segue as I can manage here. We had I'm the excited. Genesis G70 for a while, for about two years, that mm. had a two liter turbo with a six speed. Yeah. Unfortunately, they've now taken that fruit away from us. What? And on the same vein, not only are they taking a powertrain away from us, but the car that shares a platform with it. The Kia Stinger is dead as of April. I don't care about this. So oh, I kind of do just because the car is good, but uh, in my notes, the it's the same thing. I kind of do because it's still a sedan. It's still fun to drive. But, okay, hear me out. It's dying for the same reason Fiat's didn't sell. Yeah. Smart mm-hmm. cars didn't sell. They like You brought a product yeah. here that had viability, right. and then you let it die on the vine. Yeah. You didn't update it. You didn't advertise it. Nothing. Well, I think, all right, the issue with the Stinger was it, it died on the vine. Delicious. But yeah, it Put a manual the behind vine, the 33T. The, all right, so there's a is, tuning market for these. This is also a, a yeah, the 33T because it was literally a Genesis engine. Yeah, but the other thing is, is, it was yeah, it was. What was it in? Genesis Coupe. No, no, Genesis Coupe had a, it, but the Genesis Coupe had the same like that was a Mitsu 3.8. No, it had the same engine uh, design. It, 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 I'm pretty sure this is the same. So the 3.3 is based on the I, Mitsu. I think, I think it's the same engine family. Oh. That hmm. wouldn't surprise me. I th- I'm pretty sure it's the same engine family. Ooh, that engine and a Genesis Coupe would be the hotness. Yeah, or Genesis Coupe manual on that engine. Because <sighs> I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Don't hurt me like that. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I'm pretty sure Kia's not going to redesign the wheel here to make an entirely different bell housing. So I what you're saying, whole time. I could use a Genesis, 3.8, Genesis Coupe 3.8 manual trans in a Stinger or mm-hmm. a G70 V6. Mm-hmm. I kind, I kind of want that. I think that would probably work. These are pretty good looking cars, so... Like, this is the thing, is Kia's, mm. for all their hype, all they are are just designers. Yeah. Mechanically, they're still Kias. They're still shit. Which, in turn, is old Mitsubishis. Yes. And, like, mm. to the point where, like, four-cylinder Genesi... Thank you. Um, Genocide? Yeah. God Four-cylinder Genesi are... Um, Genesi. With uh, an M? <laughs> They, you, you can utilize 4B11 parts on mm-hmm. them. So, like, if you wanted... Wow. Yeah, like, literally parts bolt on from... And that's always been the thing. Like, if you got a Sonata from the 90s, you could put on a DSM turbo kit. And it would just bolt on. And there were some it's parts from... Wow. a 4G63. Actually... And it was better, wasn't it? One of my yes. favorite engines. Fun fact about that. If you took a Hyundai Tiburon 2-liter 4-cylinder uh, cylinder head and you put that on a second-gen DSM... It actually flowed better than the factory head. Oh, so and you had a wicked sick Hyundai valve cover. Yeah, but you would uh, you could actually make like a that noticeable. That makes me feel sick. Yes, you, you could make like a noticeable amount more power on a dyno than oh, you would on. Wow. So people would actually hunt down like these like Tiburon like top ends and stick them on DSMs, or even all the way around. Put DSM shit onto a, tr- a Tiburon because it was just literally a DSM iron block hey, and everything. This used <coughs> disco potato is fifty dollars. I wonder if I can put that on my Tib. Turns out you can. Yeah, literally <laughs> turbo so, Tib. Um, yeah, Kia and Hyundai have Weekly always turbo Tib. Yeah, so Kia and Hyundai have always been just like Mitsubishi stuff. It's a pretty high hmm. likelihood that you I, could probably hot rod one of these. For I, I kind of want to know more about that i mean it's not my next manual swap or anything that's going to be like the amigo vehicross five speed yeah oh yeah and you're gonna i'm gonna need a vehicross at some point probably but the i love the vehicross vehicrosses are cool. it is the crosses dumbest are damn thing i have ever seen with my face including the avon time mm-hmm. which i can't have yet yes it's true but you can have a vehicross for now i can you and can amigos it. exist in junkyards Yes, with still. manuals. You have, you have a very finite period of time in which they are still in junkyards. So. I should just buy the manual crap out of an Amigo now. Just I in would case. and just put it in yeah, storage. Just, yeah, yeah, just Wait rainy day. I've still got a BMW got X5 manual reason. trans and transfer case in my oh. garage. If you guys ever see a 30X5 with a bad auto, let me know. I can help you <laughs> manual swap it. Perfect. But like, I have a flathead for that reason. <laughs> and in the event yep. that I come across a shoebox for that needs an engine, I'm willing to build it. Very nice. Or I they're willing to pay exorbitantly for it. I'm now willing to 
put this engine together and stuff so into on a shoebox. Kia kills a car that they didn't put any effort into Correct. keeping alive. It just, I mean, sure. it's sad, but the, it's, it, they, it's because they they oh. let it do it. Like, this actually, was on so, purpose. Sorry, <clears throat> I actually had a point that I was making with this. I just this is, put it on the screen, too, because yeah, I just forgot to do it. This that. was based off of old Kia tech, so of course it killed it. They're not going to update this thing that has this one engine that's only used in this one car. Oh, they're probably okay. going to bring back something that's like a Stinger, but it doesn't fit their naming convention either. Or So they're going to bring something back that probably fits this class segment in a couple of years. Or are they just going to let Genesis have all this? No. No? Absolutely you don't not, think they'll do the Dodge No, because Kia, Kia is not Genesis. Oh, just look at that ass. Genesis angle. comes above Hyundai, but not Kia. Kia That's a good looking thing. appliance. I don't, it I'm has the never potential to be an enthusiast. Of I too. like how stingers yeah. look. Yeah, no, it, I would have. I don't care how. I don't like how any cars looked for the last 30 years. And mm. so. Mm, that's not true, right? I've liked the Fiat 500 Pop, I've liked the first generation Pop's Mazda like 5. I like the Twitter Yaris. That's about it. I guess that's about it, really. They get the first generation fit. Yeah, the fit is whoa. The yeah. Cube. I really liked the Nissan Cube. The Cyan XB, I really liked. But like, so many cars, cars that you show me that were built in the last 30 years. So you go, Tana, this is really cute. The Mercedes W124. That was not the last 30 years. Yes, so. it was. When was 30 years ago? <laughs> 1992. <laughs> I guess it was okay, but it's like barrel. That was in production for another three years. Last twenty years, I was in the nineties. Twenty years, that might be tougher. Right, I'll give you twenty. E39, so not thirty. E thirty nine five series. It's a gorgeous car. I guess you're right. Ryan, you're just trying to be elitist. You don't no, I'm not trying to be an elitist. It's just that, whereas like in That's, the nineties, what I was E38, trying to say is eighties and nineties cars. I liked all of them for the most part. Yeah. Like it's hard for me to find a car from the nineties so I objectively it's disliked. It's less sure. likely for you to find that like cars that were designed in this. Even cars that are quote unquote ugly, yeah. I will take a ninety seven Grand Prix over a two thousand seven G six. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You compare ninety seven to 07 anything. It's better in the nineties. The G six is really purely styling wise. Well, like purely styling. I would take I would take the Grand Prix over the G six. Can you pull up and 97. A 97 is like the last year of the, the old the Grand Prix, worst. too. It was peak bad Grand Prix. Yeah. It was like the they were putting all the new styling cues on the really was it the old... One where they were no, it was the first year the of the new one. On? Oh, I thought this was the last year of the old one. This is the first year of the new one. Oh, sorry. Then try a 96. Ni- ni- yeah, the 96. Yeah. That's oh, the one. Yeah. This pile wow. of shit. Was that last of that one? Yeah, I would oh, take yeah. a 96 Grand Prix over 06 G6. Okay. Yeah, no, I like that. That's but so if I had cool. to have one of these, it would have to be like the 1990 or 91 Turbo the McLaren. five speed. Yeah, you want the McLaren? Yeah, yeah. Oh, very McLaren. cool. Because they McLaren's had they had a turbocharged cool. quad cam yep. three four manual Grand Prix, and it was the year before they had uh, airbags required. So yeah. you had a steering wheel <laughs> with the airbag shape, but it was full of buttons. Yes, <laughs> and passive restraints. Yes, it was so ridiculous. <laughs> the little mice that run up the door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but um. <laughs> yeah, like this is what I'm talking about. Like cars been the last twenty years. Like it's like there's a, a the ones that, like I big obje- body Shelby Daytona Z. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the actual link, so I'm going back to the okay. tank. Oh, that's <laughs> fine. Go ahead. Sorry, Ron. Go ahead. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, th- yes, there are some good cars that were made in the last sure. twenty years. Sure. But it was it's significant. I, you know, I can throw a rock out a window into a parking lot of '90s cars and hit something that looks great. Yeah. I can throw a sure. rock out of a window and hit something from the 2000s, and it's probably gonna be a Murano. Yeah, uh, the 2000s are okay. It was the 2010s for me. It was the grilling, the great giant. It, it was the, the pedestrian safety stuff of 2011 really killed everything. Maybe that's what it was. Well, I, don't like, know. I think you, I agree well, no, with that, that, Ryan. W- that was actually like the mid 2000s, the stuff. mid to late like noughties, not. Super great, and even those I mean, early ones were '90s like. designs that were carried right. On. They were just so yeah. The E39 that he was like trying to defend. That's kind of like the last like, two like, years. Yeah, like, it was a '90s sort of thing. But like anything post. Yeah, yeah you look at the E60. You look at the E65. If you see anything oh, that's, E60, if you want yeah. something depress- depressing looking, look at like for the new Millennium cars or like the 100th anniversary Ford cars are just cursed. How much of that was due to the design language, or how much of it was due to having to comply with the new 97 crash standards? And that's I what think I wonder. a lot of it was, was design language. Cause I look think at so, the, too, because a lot of those GD, cars are compliant. The GD Accord, I guess it was technically 97. But like even when you look at like the RSX and stuff, like yeah. that 
complied with it fairly well. Ooh, I, I think the don't first really gen like it. TSX was a pretty attractive. The EP three, right. yeah, the, the, which is a Euro Cord, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but like, legit looking alright. Yeah, like and so one. and so yeah, so there's a couple, but like. You look at a 350Z and you I'm tell me that there's it. a god, you know? <laughs> when that first came <laughs> the out, I'm like... 350Z does look like it was hit with the ugly stick a few times. It's so bad. <laughs> it's and it gets good. worse you when you look at the more like an ugly baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. the baseball stitching. So, you, you, can't, you can't look at that and say that there's a god. This is a terrible vehicle. I'm thinking vehicle. right now, Do you though, feel like, like the 370 fixed it at all or came back? A little bit, a little bit. I feel like it did. But then they decided they wanted to do the wacky, wonky fucking taillights. Yeah. No, it wasn't... Perfect, and it was fixing a botched design. Yeah, uh, so I think I think like the '90s and stuff. But I mean, it's like it's entirely like possible to deal with modern crash test right. standards because look at a Fiat 500. Like that looks great, but yep. you don't need to. Like I don't know. It's just it doesn't do it well. It doesn't wear well. So that's why the Kia Stinger has never done anything for me. I like how it looks. It's the fine. facelift I'm not as enamored with as the original, but like uh, as an appliance manual, goes. So I didn't know and there was one you guys another. know me. It's a sedan. Oh, that's true. Okay. It does look like a wagon with a less useful back. Yes. Thank you. Oh. It's a hatchback. Is that a hatchback? Yes. Oh. It's not a sedan. I like it even more. Oh, it's a coupe back. Huh? Yeah. It's yeah. the Model S, which is a hatchback. Right. So. All right. I'm going to move on. Fine. I have a question. <laughs> At face value, it okay. sounds like an easy question. What is your favorite Japanese sports car? First gen NSX? No. Sports need... car or supercar? Sports car. Now, this is where it gets difficult. You have to consider, with how much these cars are appreciating, do you really want to be able to use it on a daily basis? Favorite or best? Favorite. The one that you want, like, the one that you, is your personal favorite that, like, you want to enjoy. Now, you have to consider two things here. First off, they're appreciating Mm -hmm. very quickly. So a lot of these cars, you don't really want to drive them because now it's an asset. Right. But a lot of these cars are also worth less than the sum of their parts. So on one end of the spectrum, you have something like an NSX, like you just said. Yeah. Where I would not want to drive that because that's appreciating. It's not quite at that point where it's worth peak value. Mm. But at the same time, I don't really want a Paseo. Fine, because I'll a Paseo, I don't want to get uh, get like hit with like a $500 like valuation from an insurance company if I crash it. ZZW30. That's actually was my response. Yeah, it's I think a that the, really good car, and it's slept on. Even though they're coming up in value, they're not expensive I mean, yet. That's what a really that? good one. The Marchi Spider. Oh, the that is good. one of very the best good. driving cars I've ever experienced. I've never driven or Ooh, even been in one. Ooh, they're really they're good. good. They are they're tremendous so cars, good. and their parts bin like it doesn't make sense how they drive as well as they, they do. But the control nine, weights, the feedback, everything is perfect. You, you know how like nice '90s cars drive because they aren't super heavy. But yeah. you know how like solid 2000s cars feel because they're not made of like chintzy shitty plastic yeah mm-hmm. it's both of those put together it's 2200 pounds and it feels nice it's really good yeah um i was going to say uh since you said that the celica the like the fourth gen one the final generation celica, oh, fifth gen okay the fifth gen the celica. doorstop looking one the angular the angular front wheel drive 2006 yeah. yeah the one so good the commercials were like it looks fast and the old guy's like slow down it's a neighborhood and the car's just parked or the dog runs yeah, out the one. door yep. and then runs into the back of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, one. Um, <clears throat> that is a good looking car. I they hated it, it when it was CG. new. I hated the way it looked, but it's aged really well. And, and they all drive of them great. got beat and scrapped. So the ones that are remaining oh. are good. Yeah, they're all mm. good. Like all the GTs and GTSs yep. that are left are good. They're really good. They feel fantastic. They're like a little bit better Integra. Like the Integra Do is a better like car. Do we have like an old, like what's as old as we can go before you're like this way? Oh, as old as you want. Well, Any Japanese car, but you very quickly have a cutoff. Oh, I thought you were talking about those. No, I mean, no. That, no, like, that looks like way older than what I'm thinking of. When you say that, I think of like 1990 or newer. I'm talking about like, well, that's no, just, you this go is with just the photo. Of, Honda S600 question. or whatever. Or but this is the thing is yeah, you, you, you start really quickly running into a point where the car is now an asset. And it's sure. appreciating so fast that you're doing yourself a disservice by using it at all. I, that, that I mean, I think I thing could with probably cars. give my two cents because I bought my first yeah. fun car this summer. Yeah, well, oh, I would, no, I would don't, love to hear your two don't, cents. No, oh. you guys will disagree on this. Oh, probably. Yeah, I well, I couldn't buy my favorite Japanese supercar, which is an SX Type R, because yeah. I couldn't afford it like exactly. anybody else. It's, it's an, it's an so NASA. I wanted another Honda with a wide exterior and a red oh, interior. Yeah, you, you probably Yeah, you know where it. this is going. That's 2000. <laughs> 
It's, it's not my favorite because I wanted an FDR I mean, seven, but car. it's way it's more good. expensive. It's a good car. It's fine. Uh, this I, is the thing. I don't like them because every my entire childhood. Because it isn't a Honda. No, my entire childhood I liked Honda because I like Civics. Yeah. And then everybody talks shit about them, and like I got bullied for it. Oh. And then the NSX, I start driving the fucking S2000. Like, this is the best car in the fucking world. And I'm like, eat shit. It's like, <laughs> it's like all the millennials love fucking My Chemical Romance now, but they made fun of emo kids when we were in high school. And no. that's why Jana doesn't like it when people like my chem. The S2000 for me. <laughs> you look at the car this way around, it's terrible. You look at the car this way around, and it's perfect. <clears throat> I bought one that had 60 some thousand miles on it and had a previous accident way back 25 years ago because I did want to drive it. I there, didn't want something that, Jana's, like you, to your point. The, one of the people at uh, Parks and Jana's parking unit at her work has an S2000 CR. Mm -hmm. She mentioned that, oh, there's this cute little Honda S2000. And she. I didn't even say S2000. Yeah, this is cute little like cute, cute little, little car. car. And then um, she's like, I think it's an S two thousand. Like, oh, that's cool. Like, knowing how I am about S two thousand. Sure. She did not mention that it's a CR. Also, that's a car where the S two thousand CR is where I start caring about S two thousands. But it's now at the point where now I have an asset that I can't use. So. I hear what you're saying. My buddy just sold on Bring a Trailer this year his FDR X seven. He imported it a year ago. He made decent money. Yeah. But it had less than 10,000 miles, and the only reason he sold it, he was afraid to drive it. Yeah. He no, didn't want to use the thing he bought. Yeah, it's, you got to get a, not, you, I'm not going to say a trash one, but a driver grade car. A driver grade. Yeah. Everything I've got left is a driver grade car. Really. Yeah, like. And that's what I wanted with the S was something I'm going to actually drive. So, the, like, this whole thing, like, this whole question came up because I was actually answering the question of the week on Japanese nostalgia car, which was this. Mm. And I was going to say a Paseo, and I go, I don't know about Paseo. Because I really like Paseos, but, like, they're literally a $500 car. And so, like, I value a Paseo more than the rest of the world values it. Sure. So I can't actually enjoy it. Because if I use it and it gets ruined, then it's a big fucking problem. Uh, EK9 Type R is sort of on my list. And that's a absolute asset. Yeah, I get it, but you I want something I can drive. It. Yeah, and that's why that exists, I think. Um, I would also put EM1 on my list, but it would have to be a high miler. I think an EM1 is okay. Yeah, you can get like a shitbox EM1 still. I would get a 200,000 mile EM1 that's not rusty, but it's got like body damage. You get GSR swap in it. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. Like it's, it's, all, it's been it, brutalized it a little bit. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But an S2000 works, I guess. Like, especially if you get it in a whatever color. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you get an S2000, it's like Silverstone. Like, who fucking cares? No, I had to have white. <laughs> I had to have partial red interior, or I just didn't want the car. So I got it, but here we are. Yeah, and uh, it, like DSMs don't exist. So uh, it's like, I found the smallest picture on the internet again. My, oh, it's okay. from 2000. There we go. Yeah, that's the fastest Civic we got at that age. Yeah, the M1 SI is pretty cool. And the Electron Blue is a great color. And they were only sold in two colors, right? In, uh, uh, no, no, they had three. Oh, okay. three right? Electron Blue, Black, and Red. Right. I just never see Black red. ones. Okay. Uh, yeah. Black was very, very everywhere. I think. Oh no! Oop, I've there, never, I, there I, it is. I, 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 don't, I don't think I've, I've never seen a black one. I've never personally seen a black. I've seen a lot of clones that are black, but I've not an actual. I almost bought a black one. one, but it was thrashed and had like 180 thousand and everything um, was terrible. On it. But yeah, similar to this, one uh, came up not long ago with it in nice shape with like 190 thousand miles, and it wasn't expensive. Similar to huh. this, there was a Del Sol um, SI VTEC, which was twin cam. Oh, B16. I didn't know that. Yeah. We got a B16 Del Sol. We got a B16 and a Del Sol. That's where the original B16 swaps came from. That's when. So, they, that's how people found out you can just put B16s in the things. Weren't all Del Sol's B series? No. They were all D. They were actually mostly D15s. I, I, oh. When you said B they were, anything, I was like, it yeah, was they Del were Sol. mostly. That's amazing. They were mostly. I thought D, they were all Bs. Whoops. Del Sol yeah. S's were D15s with Economy VTEC. Oh, yeah. So they like were like extra stinky. But like, yeah, a B16 Del Sol would be great. I, but yeah, I think uh, I think the early two thousands cars where they they haven't appreciated and they're just kind of like weirdo cars. Yeah, that's your that's your happy spot. I'm not to the point where like I want to fill up a garage spot with one of these, but I know if I bought one of these, it would just be fine forever. And that's like, there's a certain appeal to that. It's like this is always going to turn. Eric, on. I'm going to tell you right now, yeah. fill yep. up a garage spot with one of those. And the reason is, is you're going to be able to do it now, but. Mm -hmm. Soon you won't. That was why I yeah. had to pull the trigger this on the S. It. Was I didn't want to wait on a white with partial red because they're stupid in cost. It's there's a there's annoying. a podcast episode under a year ago where I either you or I found one for sale like relatively close by. Yeah. It was 
Electron Blue. Yeah. And it had 190,000 miles, but like it had no issues. It's it just really had a good. couple mods, and it was like 6,500 bucks. Uh, I would yeah. really buy it. I honestly, if you can find a, any EM1 under 10 grand, buy it. Yeah. It's going to appreciate it. Everybody knows about rest. it. I'm a Mitsubishi fan. I had a yeah. 90 Eclipse GST. I had a 93 VR4 uh, 3000. I like the Evo 9s. They're, they're way actually, too known, but... That's actually a very good point. Evo 9 e- could be Evo the last 8, of Evo the... 9, if yeah. it's stock, yeah. yes. Unfortunately, that's what won. None of them. Zero. But if you're committed to it, you find it where yeah. it's lightly breathed on and you start undoing uh, the problems. Right, but none of the factory parts exist anymore and Mitsubishi won't sell them to you. It's a terrible company. I have a huge spot in my heart for them, but they're not going to help. They're not like Mazda's talking about they're bringing back what, NA parts oh, and they, stuff. They, they haven't and just brought it back. You can take your NA Miata since Japan will fully restore it for you. There you go. See, they even got Bridgestone to bring back the tire that was the factory tire on the car. I'm looking at getting my get Mazda. driver's side resprayed on the S, and I can get a door and get bumpers, everything. Honda still has it. Mitsubishi, it's just no. They, Mitsubishi they drops parts like respect they, their history. No, Mitsubishi literally throws old parts out that are over ten years old. Oh, that sounds like a great solution. Oh my god! But I mean, that's literally what they do in their dealerships. Is they'll just sell them to a wholesaler. If they can't do that, they'll throw it in the trash. And it's like it's literally because it takes up space in their dealership. I, I do get it, but no, they they're look, going about it so wrong. No, they look at it as a widget. There like has Mitsubishi. to be like a third party that's taking all those parts of pennies on the dollar, though. I would oh. no, it's just really sweaty Mitsubishi people right. um, <laughs> that are like hoarding these parts. Yeah. You got to call them out like that. He's right here. <laughs> but like, no, it's, it's, I'm from it's, Missouri. This is very cold. So no, but you, you, you know what a sweaty Mitsubishi nerd is like. Uh, it's just. Uh, the, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah they're, yeah. they're very sweaty car people. Actually, <laughs> the VR4 was the highest specific output of When well, we were talking <laughs> two to 300 horse cars, I'm like. Was mine rated at 300? It might have been. So I had one in my life. <laughs> and I think the by VR4? the time I had it, it was not that, <laughs> that power that, that, anymore. It was never 300. Oh, no. I, guess I think it was. The very last couple of years. I mean, it was actually it to, 300. Oh, it was yeah, not always. Rated. Right. Yeah. 276. Yeah. Yeah, they were 276, quote unquote. Well, the last gen, or the very wing, last wing. one, they had the weird giant notch, notch. biplane wing on the back was like 320. But that was a very brief one year only car. That was the uh, GTO MR wing, and they continued that on oh. actually because, funny enough, they had an abundance of VR wings in Japan. Oh, and they didn't want to continue spending money to make the like high spec thing because yeah. they're getting their ass kicked during the when after the bubble economy like exploded they're getting right. their ass kicked so they wanted to save money everywhere they could. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's when you like saw the all wheel steering and yep, all. Yep, everything all, went away very quickly. Everything was just at, at de- ninety five. <laughs> oh wow, this car actually has a little bit of inertia removed from it. It can actually turn slightly now. Like yeah, we took all the nineties techno jap crap out of it and because the bubble economy of, crashed in ninety four, if I'm not mistaken, it was yeah. ninety. Five, they killed everything. Like yeah. if you got a ninety six three thousand GT, you had it was a normal car. But if you had a ninety four three thousand GT, you had something special where you had all this wacky shit on it. Oh, I had the ninety three. It was worse. It was worse for it, but it was special. The ninety three so. was even worse, where the hood line was designed at one point, and then the shock towers designed at another. Like, oh, these I don't love fit. That. Yes, Let's cut some holes in the hood and then put some. Plastic no, they did on that on purpose, one. actually. Oh, did they? Yeah. They, so you could actually show off that you have the fancy thing, and then just threw it on all the cars. I don't ah. know. I don't know well, about that. Sweaty. No, they did that because if, if you look at the early ones, yeah. like they were actually designed so the factory shock, like the pop up headlight ones, sure. the factory shock would fit, but mm. they would cut it out. It'd be like, kind of like, you know, it was mm. the same era in which they put an entire like paragraph on the side of the car telling you every <laughs> single option Dude, that's overhead cam. twin yeah. turbo all wheel drive super Slow high cam auto, whatever automatic you gotta write all this down <laughs> yeah automatic closing windows I'm just like <laughs> wacky automatic shit. climate control abs yeah <laughs> like every single option the car is like ever come with is written on the side of it so yeah of course they're gonna cut a hole in the hood the slap on like a, a yeah. whole desktop computer that just controls your one strut when did the mrs stop being made 2005 yeah. Well, here, a little bit later in Europe. Sure, sure. Yeah, That's so actually a lot later than 405 is the one you want. The um, last gen, because the body looks a little more clean. So they updated the body in 03. Which Factory in 04 and 05, limited slip diff. Factory oh. limited slip diff in 04 and 05. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they're they, really good cars. And yeah. they fixed the pre-cat issues, too. So yeah, they're really great. Eventually. I, yeah, that was a problem, yes. For the Huge problem. Yeah. I used to be a big Toyota hater, but that is a really cool car. That might be the 
better answer is the MR. Yeah, no, that's the correct MRI. answer. So and they're not expensive answer. yet. They have come up well, a ton that's what I'm in the last about couple years, but like, you can get a nice one for yeah, 8, no, this bucks. This is the correct answer. My Mitsubishi I had to, boy I had to, says Evo, but that might be the real answer. No, the correct answer is an MRS, and I hate that because I I'm can't afford a, one because of Lucifer. But Lucifer there's also a Celica, and then there's also an EM1. But yeah, that, this is probably the cheapest answer. I would take the Civic over the Celica, but I, I'm being persuaded by the MRS. Eric, tell us about manual transmissions. Uh, let me go back the to the great. notes. After I close all of these windows, I just opened as a Sedgwi. Who doesn't? Mm, do, 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 do. Oh, oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Very, very fine. So, I, we, okay, carbitrage has now been going on since 2018. So we've gone through an entire life cycle of a lot of car models. Yes, mm -hmm. we have. Which mm -hmm. is interesting. Um, the last time BMW updated, like, completely clean slated the M3 and the M2, we were worried that the six-speed wasn't coming back. Oh, I because know where you're going. CO2 emissions, this and that. I actually right. talked with a BMW designer rep guy who came to one of our local BMW CCA winter dinners. We paid him to come out and talk to everybody. I cornered him with a polliner in hand. I'm like, our manual's coming to this generation. He's like, yes, they are are ruining our cafe scores and our CO2 shit, but yes, we are still putting manuals all the way through this and upcoming generations of BMW M cars. And that was back when? That was in... It's probably right when we started. It's probably 2018. Okay, so we're losing this generation of cars. Are you about to give us bad news? No, no, I'm giving you good news. So they <laughs> tacitly confirmed that not only does this generation of M3 and M4, which is disgusting and don't buy one, but the M2, which is bad looking, but it looks like a 2007 Maxima, so you can kind of look at it without wincing and vomiting, is also <laughs> getting a manual, but the next generation as well is okay. getting a six speed so like bmw is Two probably over committing to the manual at this point because i'm not going to want a gas car in six years at oh, all yeah, i'm not going to want a bmw at all unless they <laughs> fix their design language this they're is not. a moot point they're not they, i know no this is the thing is their designer BMW, right now is worse than bengal bmw fixed <laughs> I, they've been going downhill it's I, they've bad. not had a car that made me more excited than the previous model year in literally 20 years I would like they are they are the poster child of that weird thing I was talking about where it's like I can throw a rock out a window and hit any car from the nineties or eighties that I love. The, but like it gets much more difficult. Like BMW is the poster child of that. Like I would take an M two C S. But I mean like can you say that, that that can you say that that is objectively better looking than an E forty six or an E thirty? It, it would be close. It's not. The M2 the CS two is a series, really good-looking car. The 2 Series and the 1 Series are a slow burn. When they first but came out, I didn't like them. The but one as time series, has gone the one on, series really warmed up to good. I, and the first 2 Series, when it didn't have an M but engine, looked there, good. But then they put not, the Pringles mustache if, on it, and I didn't like it. If there, was, if there wasn't a 1 the M... Could, could, if yes. there wasn't a 1 M1 Series, oh, yeah. I wouldn't like it as much as I would like the E46. Yeah, and I'm never going to actually own an M2, but like it's because I have the 1M, and that's just better. Yeah, but that's the thing, is like... It's worse. It, it is. It is and like objectively saying, worse. It, it's gotten like, worse. There's a couple of cars. Again, this isn't me just being a hipster about like Radwood cars. You need like, like a full thin slice of the entire manufacturer for that time. Like most of their products sucked ass yeah, and it looked like, terrible. Uh, like mm. there's there are some manufacturers where I actually like Fiat is a great example. Like yeah. the Fiat 124, I great car. Objectively like more than the original because the original I cannot stand. It's my least. One of my least favorite Italian cars of all time, including hmm. the 90s Maltois. Um, <laughs> As opposed to... <laughs> Heavy hitters. We're bringing I, them out. I have, I have no follow-ups to that. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's how much I hate that vehicle. Um, like, that's a vehicle where removing the safety bumpers does nothing to help it. And that's very rare for a 70s car, for being mm -hmm. that plug-ugly. Wow. That even if you remove the safety bumpers and it you put on... It doesn't help, help it. Styling. It's still terrible looking. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the 124, I objectively like more. The Fiat 500 modern pop, Vanilla, yeah, I yeah. actually like it. As Is that the white interior? No, it's just the base model. It's just the base is what it's called. Yeah, with, without, the fan, without the bar's front that. end like mine has. I hate my front end. It is a base 500. Yeah, Cloth seats, is, yeah. manual. Well, great. you could get an auto. But it looks great. Yeah. I like it without the chrome trim. I like it just being all plastic. It's great. But the, the but wheel like, covers are also like the best looking wheel covers to ever exist. Exactly. Um... <laughs> 
But yeah, seriously, they look better than BMW, the BMW. Like, meanwhile, like every car they've made is just worse in every yeah. fucking way. Like they just can't make things. And it sucks because the one that slips through is the the only core people that are also working there and also pissed off, but they don't jump ship are the people that are still putting the six speed in this car. And then the one model that looks tolerable, but it doesn't save the entire company. No. Cause I mean, you like with Fiat, like all their product looks interesting. Like the 500 L like love it or hate it. Like it's an interesting style of car. 500 X, right. same thing. It, yeah. it looks way better than a renegade. 124, awesome car. 500, awesome car. So like that entire company, like okay, you're you're, you're doing it. No, it's like the guy. It was like the one dude left at Toyota was like hanging on making like the Corolla XRS in like in 2008. And then GR, right. bam. And then like he, he like somehow mm. like held on through the storm until GR came around. But like yeah. BMW, I don't see GR. Where's GR coming? Because like Toyota, yeah. Like Toyota, I knew that like. The factory, like not the factory, but the family that actually owned Toyota were all car enthusiasts. Yeah. BMW is just a widget manufacturing. Well, they lost all the good though. people, yeah. Yeah, that's It's I mean. not one more generation. It's a few more generations. We have it's time. Two. Yeah. So there's a... I'm not saying it's going to happen. If we I fire just, I see the new Snooty McBeaver series, face. series with the... Yeah. Oh, they keep getting bigger and bigger dude, and bigger. Well, we're not eventually... I'm just saying like, it have, it'll have to turn the other way. By the time... by the, the giant grill trend. No, by, by, late, the, late, by the time... Yeah, maybe. By the time BMW saves, like, the 3 Series, yeah. it's just going to be a final generation Avalon TRD where it's just a grill with headlights. Yeah. <laughs> or the new I, I hope Duramax you're wrong, but Chevy. I think you're right. Oh my god, just it, keep stacking more grill. But okay, but I want you to throw a photo of uh, no, Avalon TRD nope, so we can nope. just look at it. I will grill not. I will not put a nope. grill heavy car on there. Can we circle back to the Murano? Oh okay. no, yes we can. But my why? friend in Kansas City, pictures on the street. I sent you it, Eric. Um, you've got a giant phone. You I can do have a giant phone. A bit of that. Show Ryan here what I, what I have a picture that of. That is a Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet. Let Ryan inspect the photo for two minutes to see that it's not just a Nissan Murano oh, no. Cross Cabriolet uh, two? in the suburbs of Kansas City, Missouri. They also have a giant truck? Across the street. <laughs> There's two! I shit you not. You can use the artwork. Send it over. Is that a Cross the Cab? location because it's a friend of mine. There are two wow. Nissan Murano cross cabs. That's incredible. They did not make many of those. That's my phone. Thank you. Um, Isn't that f in the A? No, that's great. <laughs> the owners groups are my favorite internet All right, groups. so this is I believe goes and his wife are hiding out somewhere in the suburbs yes. of Kansas City right <laughs> that, now. That is exactly where Carl's going is, hi is hiding. Uh, this is the thing with the cross cab. Is the cross cab is a very based automotive decision. Yeah. Because you are buying a vehicle where everybody in the world is telling you as loudly as they can, this is a terrible vehicle yes. in every aspect. There's nothing good about it. The timing chains will explode at 150,000 miles. The CVT transmission will not work. You need to say CVT. The, the, yeah, sorry. The CVT will not work. Oh, the CVT. Automatic, oh. the, like, the power top explodes. <laughs> it literally explodes because everything's made of plastic. It's Most very of the expensive. Probably the doors, in Kansas City now, so the doors sag too. because the door pan, they're the, gigantic. The door, pill the door they're pillars. They're all here. Were, oh, interesting. Yeah, Weird. the door pillars Gross. were not designed to have that, that large of a door on it. Yeah. So yeah, there's so many problems in every way on this vehicle <laughs> that when you make that decision, you are throwing caution into the wind. Like it's not like it's not like a, it's, it's not like almost a, a beautiful thing and how terrible yeah, it's, it is. It's not like a Tiguan where like you went for it and terrible. You, like you just assume for some reason in your head you got this like wrong idea that Volkswagen's not a terrible company. <laughs> like and you just I buy it phase. on accident. I'm no, through, I'm in a phase right now. People buy <laughs> like cross cabs and they keep sixteen thousand dollars in their savings they account. Know what's happening? For when the I when could the have roof an EKSI, explodes. but I really need this money to keep this For thing real. on the road. <laughs> no, like they literally keep sixteen thousand dollars like on hand in case the top explodes. Not in case. For when? Yeah, in case the date the time <laughs> finally decides they sold to come. Thirty three thousand six hundred eight of these things. What? That's way more than I would have thought. I yeah, I would have undered on that so hard. Yeah, Whoa. that's kind of. That, yeah, that's actually amazing. <laughs> I'm really surprised by that. Uh, yeah. That number has to be wrong. I, I thought it was going to be like three thousand. Yeah, I, but, I was like under ten, so obviously. And we yeah. were with nod with our BMW, head. though, BMW just does <laughs> oh, nothing yeah. for me. They're never. I, there's uh, circling back. I, <coughs> I don't see it panning out. 
that BMW is going to design their way out of their problem. Did you guys already go over the new two ser- M2? No, no we have I no don't interest wanna, in covering it. I don't it. care about it. It's so pretty fun. What I want to talk about is actually the GR Rav Four that they released in Europe. What? what? No, yeah, no, no, that's a crossover. It's Why? a crossover. Why are we talking it's about a crossover. lifted it's hatchbacks a, again? It's a crossover. It's a, a plug-in hybrid electric. <sighs> I'm getting worse. But this and is the thing: now. is it's not even moving. This is Toyota just saying, you know what? 304 horsepower is 304 horsepower, and it's just suspension modifications to make it work correctly. So this Ooh. is just like a Lexus NX 350h with a little more smoke spunk in its electric boogaloo. Yes, <laughs> um, and so it. It doesn't have any more power, but they did all the suspension work. Whereas, mm. like, the Mercedes, like, a GLS or GLA AMG thing yeah. is terrible. It is. Uh, they did not do any suspension work on the GLA. Oh, the GLA, the melted raisin yeah, styling? Yeah, that thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. the one where I was talking shit about when you arrived. Yeah, that. Those, oh. they did. That's a GLE. Yeah, sorry, GLE. Oh. Um, Doesn't matter. It doesn't. It, it literally doesn't matter. G-O. All of these, all these hybrids, where they do an AMG or an M version of a crossover, they literally just stick on some bodywork. Okay. This one, um, not yeah, just that. Yeah, not option. just that. It's actually got 19-inch wheels with like better tires on it from the factory. Hmm. You have stiffer, uh, sh- uh, stiffer springs, um, revalve shocks for better handling. Well, it's not making me stiffer. And it's it's not. A bigger battery, so it's not a heavier vehicle. No, nope. not They hybrid. added suspension without the corresponding weight that they usually add. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they actually did like a GR thing where they're just like beyond like like a TRD is what they do for their throwaway now, the, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the GR thing is the actually M's a performance because like this is the thing: it's three hundred and four horsepower. If you're in a Rav Four, you don't need more than that ever. No, but I still wager this is slower than an 07 Rav Four V6. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that car was not designed for people to survive. That car was a freak. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you're familiar, but the, I know what a Rav Four is, but not the, the specifics third gen, of the this. The third gen Rav Four. Okay. Were they the first generation where they had a V6? Okay. They had two years in which there was a 3.5 liter V6, where they put in the big V6, That's a big engine, yeah. without updating the body style. Oh. And so for sleepery. this, yes, for yeah. this, these two years, horse, lightweight. It's zero to sixty was faster than a WRX. They were like 5.4 to 60. Like, they were comically fast. They were really quick. Uh, Maybe five, I assume six, slush, back, slush box. Five speed yeah, auto. it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. But it's no, comically I'm fast. I'm just deciding if I want one. I'm sure yes, that's with like a car good. and driver no, brake boost, but still. Just, that is a comically fast vehicle. Those were yeah, really no, it, quick. It is like you feel like you're going to die fast. Okay. It, I've driven a few of them. RAV4 V6 is, and a, they is, are, a, is a play. Yeah, because like this is the thing is this engine was designed for Siennas and like Highlanders cluggers. Well, and IS three fifties. Yeah, like for ah. big, huge, heavy. But in the Rav, it's not IS. But in the Rav four, still... it's transverse. I think. The, I'm it's, assuming it's, it's transverse. Line, it's it's right? transverse. Yeah. yeah. It's transverse. But um, in the Rav four, it's in a vehicle that's like I think six seven hundred pounds lighter. <laughs> then like uh, uh, an equivalent so it moves Highlander. out of its own way it gets that's nice it is so silly fast and like the suspension has not been upgraded nor have the brakes nope it shares brakes yeah. with the four cylinder nope so when you um w- when you accelerate with it and you <gasps> go into a corner breaking news uh-oh what is it the when we were young fast day one was canceled because of weather that's hilarious oh no poor darren yeah my chem just posted on their instagram that was that giant um, music festival with all the emo bands in Vegas. Okay. That nobody I, thought was but, real. Yes, but anyway. Um, Sponsored by Spencer's. Yeah, yeah so, okay, this, so the suspension on this. Topic. The suspension on this <laughs> didn't have like anti dive geometry or anything special. Right. It was a RAV4. Like it was very mushy. But they it was stapled mushy. the Lexus V6. It into. was mushy Filling 2005 in Toyota suspension, old man suspension. <laughs> And they just put the biggest, most powerful engine they've ever made at that point in time, other than the LFA. So it's kind of like a bobblehead. That engine yeah. was like 80 more horsepower than its predecessor, yes. V6. Wow. The 3.3 3 was did. like 220, and the 3.5 was 300. Yeah, no, they, they, it was, it, they are so silly fast. And the generation after that, like literally the next year where they updated the body style, yeah. 
it does not feel as kill well, yourself fast at all. Sure. Like it, it's like it's still just as fast. But the but, pitching and the rolling right. and all that. Yeah, the body the it was designed for that. Of speed. <laughs> Delightfully misconfigured. Like, but this yeah. is um it's a funny car. This takes that same amount of power and does it in a plug in hybrid, but actually makes it so you can take this thing around a corner and while your buddies with their like their right. AMG whatever the fucks Going to like the ski slopes and like the Alps. No, they're you parked can take in this. a handicap spot. Yeah, but this one, yeah, you're right. Um, but this one, you can actually take around a corner, which I think is kind of So cool. the Toyotas, correct me if I'm wrong, they're not doing the pancake motor EV Honda style where it's in line of the gas. Not no. on these, no. No. And the rear on power these, it's a rear only. power train. That's yes. a, a clever thing. I wish some hot hatches would have tried that, but I think we're going to lo- lose what that I generation really like about that EV only. Is with the first generation hybrid Highlanders, they're hitting junkyards now. Mm. And are they the same way where it's just it's an electric drive? motor? That's so cool. Electric motor stuffed to solid rear axle. Uh, yeah, it's great. Well, the Highlanders and the RX 400 H's were. Oh, sorry, they're independent. Yeah. Yeah, but like they're they're only rated at 75 horsepower, but they're pretty beefy. So and I think they've you got could torque, double that. You know, yeah. so you can actually but get a moment. The, a turn. If you think of there's 75 dollars though. Yeah, the like, 75 nobody bucks. Nobody wants them. And th- this is what I really love is. Do you know how much horsepower like a Toyota Publica or something has? No clue what that even is. About sixty. You look up a Toyota Publica. <laughs> like so it's, it's probably is a it 19- like a yard a ni- a nineteen seventies Toyota Publica. Oh, okay. it was, it came in below a Corolla in I Japan. See. Oh. 28 yeah, horsepower. Very cute. Yeah, 28 horsepower is what it had. 40 in the later models. Yep, 28 to 40 horsepower. So you can just put this in place of a Publica, and like. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, and stock train? power levels, yeah. Yeah, oh and, and then you'll have the, actually more than stock. You'll have basically a Publica SR. The biggest <laughs> issue is they don't have um, any encoder on them, so you would need to retrofit a position encoder on the motor to run it with any sort of standalone controller. But that's yeah. not a big deal. Okay, that's something that the aftermarket's yep. figuring out without a problem. Yep. So I think that'd be hilarious. And they have a Publica. Toyota engine code too. We talked about this. Yeah, years they ago, actually have an engine code. Yeah, for the they're super cool. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the rear... And it's the same unit. Like, they have done no updates to this mm-hmm. since 06. There's like, got to be a parallel world where we didn't dive down the turbo rabbit hole in the 80s, and we had EVs as our power adder to engines, and we'd have screaming NA engines combined with EVs. would have been so the cool. The torque fill is appealing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then exactly. Yeah, the torque fill would be great. And then I yeah. really love the idea of having... Because with these cars, there is no sound deadening on publicas and small things like sure. that. Sure. So you'll actually be able to hear the electric motor. Right. So it'll sound like a big angry drill. Mm-hmm. So right. I'm pretty here for it. But yeah, I think that this is just kind of cool that they actually did it. And like when I saw like, oh, weird, like Toyota threw GR onto a hybrid RAV4, like that's really weird. They don't throw GR around like that. Yeah. yeah. This, and this so brand like, hasn't been sullied to that point yet. Yeah. And so I'm like, <laughs> when they did that, I'm like, are they sullying this? And then I looked, I'm like, no. Is this S-Line? Is this F-Sport? Is this uh, M-Sport? No, they're, they're actually Sport looking at this, S-line? and they're saying, oh, no, the power is not the limiting factor on this vehicle. It's the, it's the chassis. So they did what they could to make the chassis better. Super so I think that's kind of cool. Champion Edition? I think it's cool. I would, I would happily put a, like a hitch on this and put my Yaris GR onto the back of that and take this to the racetrack. Hmm. To tow I do tow with things. I like yeah. towing things. So can, okay, there's a good. You can tow with. For this actually, business. I wonder if this is a higher tow rating. I would imagine it because could the be. upgraded suspension, suspension and brakes, and brakes. Not the yeah. power, but the this suspension. Would, this would up. This would also up the tow capacity. Huh. Well, there you go. Top tip: If you want to tow your Yaris GR, <laughs> if you're in Europe and you want to be seen in a crossover, Rav Four GR with the existence of nice wagons and hatches, you can get and a Rav, diesels, you can which get are still more efficient. Just get a focus. Or Rav Four GR. Oh, Does, that's Yaris is what he meant to say in front of the GR. I'm surprised they even sell RAV4s in Europe. 